top dog turned Hollywood uber creep. I want to be a superstar, 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 superstar. Movie mogul Harvey Weinstein was the first big scalp of Me Too, the movement that calls out celebrity gropers and sexual predators. took off around the globe until it met the French resistance. More than a hundred high-profile women who signed the famous Le Monde letter, defending the right of men to pester women. This is a country notorious for its paradoxes. The French eat a crazy amount of cheese and don't get fat. They're famous on one hand for their French feminist writers, but on the other for their old-fashioned concept of male gallantry, which makes this the country where a woman is most likely to have the door open for her by a man. I think it has a lot to do with the, the notion of Frenchmen being great lovers, you know, the notion that this the is a... Of Le Pew thing. Exactly. It is love at first sight, is it not? No. Once upon a time, this horny skunk cartoon parody seemed innocent enough. But for many French women today, being hit on in the street is an all too real part of life. Will Me Too finally subdue Pepe Le Pew? I'm in Paris to find out. I'm on my way to meet a slightly controversial woman and one of the signatories to that Le Monde letter. Brigitte Lahaye is a well-known French radio host, running talkback about sex and relationships. But she's most famous for her earlier career as an actress with starring roles in more than 40 French pornographic films. We're meeting at La Musardine, a famous erotic bookshop. Oh, Brigitte. nice to meet you. Annabelle, enchanté. I want to know why she signed that letter and what she thinks French seduction is all about. Alors, la séduction à la française, pour moi, c'est vraiment euh, rendre hommage à, à la féminité. Moi, j'ai beaucoup travaillé à Londres, par exemple, et j'étais très étonnée que les hommes, les Anglais, donc, ne me, me laissent pas passer devant eux. Alors qu'en France, euh, on, pou, on peut... On, on peut pas, alors, peut-être moins maintenant, mais euh, naturellement, euh, les, les hommes, euh, dans une file d'attente, par exemple, euh, pourront laisser passer une femme euh, devant. C'est ça, la séduction à la française. C'est une sorte de euh, dommage euh, et c'est... Notre, notre féminité nous autorise, euh, euh, c'est une sorte de passe-droit, notre féminité. Brigitte was a teenager when she first moved to Paris. It was shortly after the 1968 revolution, which changed France forever. Then, students and workers rioted to overthrow the conservative social order in all kinds of ways, including a new wave of sexual freedom. There was quand même une joie de vivre et une manière de. De, de, de vivre qui sentait, euh, qui sentait justement la, la, la liberté. Quoi. On pouvait s'habiller euh, n'importe comment dans la rue sans se faire, euh, sans se faire harceler. That freedom from harassment is not something young French women talk about today. Quite the opposite. Whether or not 
you believe in the Frenchman's right to pester. There's little doubt that it's widely exercised here in Paris. A recent government survey of female public transport users found that 100% of them reported that they'd been sexually harassed while travelling. One of France's most passionate young YouTube stars, Marion Seclin. In 2016, she posted this video with a direct appeal to French men to stop hassling women in public places. Même si tu es gentil, même si tu aimes ta maman et toutes les autres femmes sur terre, même si tu es respectueux, même si tes intentions sont louables, même si tu récites du Baudelaire, même si tu es désolé de les déranger, tu les déranges si tu les interpelles dans la rue. The video went super viral, but Marion received death threats and stopped counting the abusive comments when they passed 40,000. When French women step out on the streets, do they make plans? Like, do they wear something to try and make it less likely that they'll be bothered? Like, is that, does that happen? Yes, it does. It actually is uh, way more, uh, like, weirder than this. It's that um, they will wake up in the morning and ask themselves, what will I wear today? Because what will the weather be like? So that's a question everyone asks themselves. But also, um, what neighborhood am I going through and at what time am I going to be back home and can I afford a Uber or a taxi or anything because they know this is going to happen. This is something pressuring them. It's something that you know is going to happen, you just don't know where, when or what. So you're kind of thinking as a woman, let's make it that it does not happen to me today. It feels like a strategy for damage control. It is. Right. So this fact that we have on our mind a load yeah. superior than boys, than just the weather, is something that disturbs me a lot. And this is why I made the video, it's can, that... Can you see, can you look at a guy on the street and know that that's the guy that's going to come and say something to you? you no, know, you can never know. Right. It's like, surprise. I'm that guy. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know. Marion's point was proven in dramatic style recently when another video went viral. This time a Frenchman punching a young woman, a stranger, who had rejected his advances. This doesn't look like the kind of equality envisioned by the protesters of 1968. What was actually in that notorious open letter that inflamed so much passion? The letter expressed sympathy for men who have been disciplined in the workplace when their only crime was to touch a woman's knee or steal a kiss. It complained that the Me Too movement was Puritanism in the name of a so-called greater good. And perhaps most controversially, it pledged to defend a freedom to bother as indispensable to sexual freedom. The signatures of screen goddesses Catherine Deneuve and Brigitte Lahaye added heat and star power to the mix. But much of the actual writing was done by this woman, scientist and philosopher Peggy Susk. Peggy, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> She says it was a response to the excesses of the Me Too movement and its French equivalent, Balance Tom Pork, which translates to call out your pig. Il faut pas revenir à des logiques moyenâgeuses qui est de, de la réputation, de l'ostracisme. Je veux dire, ça, on sait que ça marche pas. En fait, on sait que ça fait des chasses aux sorcières. On, fait, on sait que ça fait énormément d'abus euh, de, de gens qui sont accusés à tort, etc. Extrêmement nocive. On sait qu'elle est nocive. Il euh, y, y, y a eu des, 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 des exemples, des, des, des exemples dans l'histoire. Euh, l'histoire regorge d'exemples très, 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 très mauvais là-dessus. Et donc, non, n'allons pas dans cette direction, en fait. Peggy, do you think that the relations between men and women in France are different from other countries in the world? J'ai l'impression, en tout cas, que les relations hommes-femmes euh, en France sont peut-être plus simples dans le sens où elles sont plus. Voilà, on est, on est, on est. Euh, 
comment dire, il y a plus de bon sens, enfin, il y a plus de, voilà, de, de simplicité, de, 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 peut-être moins de peur aussi. Il ne faut pas qu'on prenne comme exemple euh, le, 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 le puritanisme américain où, en fait, on considère que par défaut, la relation homme-femme, justement, a un problème et qu'il que, que y a forcément un dominé et un dominant, alors que les choses sont beaucoup plus complexes et, beaucoup plus, et se, se, se jouent, en fait, à des niveaux individuels. I go here, I encounter this horror at the prospect of moral censorship. This is a country where marital infidelity among political leaders is the rule, not the exception. Emmanuel Macron is reportedly faithful to his wife, but he's the first French president in 50 years of whom this can be said. Je crois que ce qui est important à comprendre, c'est que, bien sûr, il y a une, une transgression euh, et une libération sexuelle particulièrement importante en France. Le, un homme qui, qui a beaucoup d'aventures, ça n'a rien de, de choquant que dans les autres pays. Je, je pense que c'est plus notre, notre érotisme et notre culture qui fait qu'on va être très indulgent sur les frasques d'un homme politique. French Minister for Gender Equality, Marlène Schapper, is unworried by the intrusion of sex into the workplace, even for politicians. No, because we are not animals, so we are globally able to se contenir. No, I am not favorable to the regulation of relations between people. I think that the only regulation that must exist is the consent. And in the case of two adults who are consenting, I think that nothing is interdicted. After his election in 2017, President Macron declared gender equality the grand cause nationale of his government. He promised penalties for companies paying women less than men and tougher sentences for sexual offences. Plus, an on-the-spot fine of 90 euros for sexual harassment in public places. I think it was something that it was like a first step. The problem is that, how is it gonna work? It's the same, you know, you're not allowed to pee in Paris Street. Have you smelled Paris Street? It smells like pee, why? It's because every guy, now and then, where they're drunk or when they just want to pee, they pee in the streets. So you're supposed to have a, uh, to pay 80 euros if someone finds you peeing in the streets. But there's no one to have this rule work. There's no one here to look around street corner and say, oh, what you do is forbidden. It seems that part of the mystique of la seduction française is that it's kind of all about what men are doing to women, like this idea of gallantry and opening doors and saying you have beautiful legs or something like that. My generation, I think, the boys and the girls, they don't have that thing anymore and uh, where they want to keep these things, where you open the door, you pay for dinner, you are, uh, you're being really polite, you're being like a, I don't know. If it was something bigger, if like in French seduction, a boy had to build a house for a woman, I'd say, sure, I'd keep it, because th that would be a big privilege for me. But hope someone opening the door, it's not even helpful more than just three seconds in my day, so. Yeah, but the, so the problem paint my house. Yeah. Now we're talking. No, but just do something that is really helpful and that, that I need. But I don't need someone to open the door for me or pay for dinner for me because I earn my own money. I have a job. So how are young French guys dealing with me too? And will the new laws really cramp the average Frenchman's amateur style? Risking a 90 euro fine, I've approached some Frenchmen and invited them for lunch. Meet Victor, Xavier and Arnaud. 
girls like, if I prefer to meet someone in the streets. Right. Because there is something magic. I think in, their imag in everybody's imagination, yeah. it's like um, something very romantic mm -hmm. to be approached and uh, like, oh, you look beautiful or I'd love to offer you a drink. And that's so lovely. And I think in everybody's imagination, you want to meet the, the princess or the prince that would, you know, see yeah. you where ev no one sees you, you know? Yeah. But in fact, it's, uh, it's more tough than that. And it's true that you can see women here in the street walking really fast just because they don't want to be, yeah. you know, approached. But do you ever think that you've, I don't know, like that it's the person didn't want you to come up and say anything, like maybe they're just like, ah. Oh. Yeah, but don't you even like, if someone walks to you and tells yeah. you like, can I buy you a drink, you're beautiful, you say no, right. say peace off. Yeah. But, Inside yourself, you'd be happy, no? That someone walked to you and say, wow, he likes not me. Necessar I mean, not necessarily, because um, maybe for a lot of women, that happens to all the time, they, f they find it hard to have to deal with that all the time and to make the response and like, ugh. Mm -hmm. They don't want, maybe want to go and have a drink or be even told what they look like. I don't know, I think women often get told what they look like, either positively or negatively, all day long. And maybe sometimes they get sick of it. But in fact, uh, all people meet uh, in, uh, I think now, 80% of the case on the application. Oh, Tinder. So Tinder yeah. is big in France. I mean, there's Tinder, dating yeah. apps. Because it's... It's, uh, you, you don't have to go out and you can stay uh, lonely at your home yeah. and just on your phone. So the thing is, on Tinder is that you know when you're sure that the other person that you will be talking to mm. are free and are looking yeah. for yeah. the same kind of stuff that you are looking for. Yeah. But if you are uh, going on the street and asking for a girl like that, um, I don't know the word in English, but we said uh, se prendre un vent. Like, yeah, just it's like to be like, oh, right. yeah, you know, yeah. right? So we are afraid of, of yeah. having that. How often does that happen? Easier. All the time. I would say all, all the time. <laughs> and what's yeah. your response if you get the piss off? That's right. <laughs> we keep coming back to this idea of how the French want to see themselves as a country of freedom and equality, and where women and men have a special kind of arrangement. <laughs> I can't tell if this is genuinely changing. Maybe I need to stop asking French people. Annette Young is an Australian-born journalist who now presents 51%, a show about women's issues on French TV. What did you notice about living in France when you first arrived? I think for me the most interesting revelation was the interaction between men and women. There was much more flirtation, open flirtation that goes on without any hesitation. So what is it that makes a guy feel in this country able to just walk up by himself to a woman who's minding her own business and start kind of asking for a phone number and it just seems very bold. I think it has a lot to do with the, the notion of Frenchmen being great lovers, you know, the notion that this the is a... Pepe Le Pew thing. Exactly. That this is a culture that celebrates love and seduction. Yeah. So I feel that it, 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 you are witnessing in this country a generational shift and also the fact that more women than ever are working. They're having to work. And so they're coming into workplaces where the culture has not changed for decades and they're not happy and they want that to change. They want a, that gender pay gap to be addressed. They want discrimination to be dealt with and they certainly want sexual harassment to be looked at as a serious crime. So one of the other elements of the Le Monde letter is this idea that, um, that the Me Too movement and its culminates around the world compromise sexual freedom, which is something that's very 
precious in this part of the world, right? I, I think it comes from the 1968 revolution where, and you've got to remember at that time across the world, you know, it was free love. And the French took that up with a massive hurrah because it celebrated everything that they view about love and romance. Mm. And that is the reason I would say that there is no age of consent. That is a, I was so surprised to learn that about France, yeah. It is extraordinary. Is that a, um, a reaction to the sort of overthrow of bourgeois ideals that happened in 1968? Absolutely, and I think it's all part of that social revolution, challenging the norms and so on. In May, the Macron government attempted to legislate 15 as the legal age of consent in France, meaning that sex with a child below that age would automatically be classed as rape. But after criticism that this would offend the presumption of innocence, the government retreated. Under the revised law, sex with a child under 15 is a crime, but not necessarily rape. There was a case last year where an 11-year-old girl um, was yeah. raped, but the yeah. attacker's defence was that she'd consented. She consented, and they got the lesser charge of sexual assault as opposed to rape, so therefore, you know, their penalties was going to be far lower than, obviously, if they'd been charged or found guilty of rape. And so women's groups have been pushing very hard mm. for this uh, age of consent to be changed. Macron, when he came to power, promised that he would do this, but at the very last minute, they walked back. And as you can imagine, there was a great deal of anger among many women's groups here in France, an extreme disappointment that he didn't go through. The government's retreat on the age of consent legislation was disappointing, but not a huge surprise to some. Oh, how civilised to have a little office to work from. Well, wait until you see the office. Adelaide Bonn is a former actress and now an activist and writer. She's just published a novel based on her own life and a terrible experience she had at age yeah, nine. I'm very lucky. When I was a little girl, uh, I was uh, raped by a man who fooled me in the street and raped me in my parents' building. And it took me years and years and years to understand that what happened to me in those stairs was rape. And then to, to understand that it wasn't me that was violent, perverted, guilty, shameful, but that all those things belonged to him. Her parents called the police and reported the crime. And 26 years after that, the cops called me and told me, well, we got a suspect and uh, a trial is gonna take place. And this is all thanks to DNA. A further 80 charges of rape and sexual assault were made against Adelaide's attacker. But many fell outside France's 20-year statute of limitations. The Macron government has since extended it to 30 years. Adelaide believes the French don't take the crime of rape seriously enough. Most of the time, someone who's been a victim of, of rape will see the rape downgraded to just harassment uh, because it's not the same court. It's a court that is takes um, a, a lot less time, and so the, the penalties are going to be fewer. Rape is minimised in France, and most of the people think it's not such a big deal. And, yeah. OK, so what is it about France and French culture that makes people think that rape's not a big deal? In France, we are so keen on the words, on seduction, and what we call galanterie, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, there is something about this game around the man and the woman, where the man is leading and the woman is uh, accepting. What I think is that when you talk about sex, um, you're going to, to use exactly the same word than when you're talking about sexual violence. It's an issue Adelaide faced as a child when describing her own attack to police. Or, for example, in French, we have to say caresse, 
right? Caress means a gentle touch. And so the officer said, so it's like caress? And I said, no, we're missing words to say those things. And I really think that's part of the misunderstanding between people who've been victim and people who have not been. The spectacle of French women arguing with each other about harassment has been uniquely titillating to some. But I wonder if everyone is being heard. On the outskirts of the city lies the working class suburb of Seine-Saint-Denis. Under French laws, the government's not allowed to collect any population data about race, ethnicity or religion. But the proportion of immigrants here is high, and so are poverty levels. Marianne, tout va bien? Gynecologist Dr. Garda Hatem has established a special clinic for women who have experienced trauma. Genital mutilation, uh, rape, um, they were f forced marriage. And so many hard things that talking about harassment in the public space is not, uh, it's not a topic for them. When those hundred high-profile French women wrote the letter to Le Monde denouncing the Me Too movement, what did you make of that? I thought it was quite ridiculous. I mean, we, we're fighting for freedom, we've, we are fighting for empowerment, we're fighting for equity. And we can't stay with this very old, uh, fascinated uh, image of women. So I, I didn't like this uh, letter. Do you feel like this debate is confined to a, a restricted group of women in French society? Of course, because so many women doesn't have the, um, are, are, don't feel concerned about that by this movement. For them, it's a movement for uh, actresses or um, rich women, um, and they're not. Uh, their life doesn't match with these women's lives, so they don't absolutely don't feel concerned. Our patients here, they don't feel concerned with that at all. The international shout of protest that is the Me Too movement has meant different things to different people. For some, relief. For some, fear. And for others, nothing at all. Here in France, I think it's brutally articulated some questions which once were lost in an ornate code of seduction. It's hard to imagine that they will ever be silenced again. Oh,